Hello my fellow investors and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today guys, let's take another one of your recommendations in the form of the company Expeditors. Now this one was brought up by Just Beep, where you pretty much just said, hey could you please take a look at and then the ticker symbol EXPD, which is this company. So let's see what they actually do guys. Let's take a quick look at the snapshot of their earnings. Let's take a look at their fundamentals, give those fundamentals a grade, and then using discounted free cash, we'll see if they are a buy. So with that said, Let's get started with this analysis. So now guys, let's actually jump into the company profile because I have no idea what this company does. And we got Expeditors International of Washington Inc. provides logistics services in the Americas, North Asia, South Asia, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, and India. The company offers air freight services such as air freight consolidation and forwarding, ocean freight and ocean services, including ocean freight consolidation, direct ocean forwarding, and order management, custom brokerage, intracontinental ground transportation and delivery and so on and so on so on um, i'm not gonna read the rest of it guys but they're pretty much a logistics service company looking at their earnings they were announced on november 8th 2022 eps normalized actual came in at two dollars and 54 cents which is a pretty big beat by 60 cents eps gap actual two dollars and 54 cents again beat by 55 cents Revenue came in at $4.36 billion, which was a beat by $151.35 million. So now let's come into the calculator. We got the ticker symbol for EXPD. Market cap of $17.57 billion. A PE of 11.61 with a current share price of $110.41. Now this PE is telling me guys that this is looking very, very cheap right now. Now at least it's not very, very cheap, but it's, it's definitely on the cheap side. And with a current share price of $110, we can see that on the one year, they're down 11.63%. And so far on the year to date, they're up 5.17%. Though a lot of companies are up so far, which is kind of concerning. I really do hope that we do not get into another bull market. 52 week ranges is between $86.08 to $127.64. So we're in the middle but definitely more towards this upper end of this 52 week range they do pay out a dividend of a dollar and 34 cents which is a yield of 1.23 percent a payout ratio of 13.1 percent a five-year CAGR of 9.8 percent with 19 consecutive years of dividend payment ex dividend date passed as of november 30th so their next one will probably be in february like a february 30th or sorry not for february 30th I'm, I'm sorry february like 28th february 27th like around that time payout date was in december 15th so they'll probably pay out in like march 15th and they pay their dividends semi-annually that was a rare one we rarely get, get to see those guys now based off of the current shares outstanding and this annual dividends of a dollar and 34 cents they pay out a 213 dollars and 19 cents and in regards to the five-year average free cash flow after this is paid they're nearly still left with 700 million dollars and as of last year's free cash flow it is it is just i mean insane 1.65 billion dollars so they pretty much went up in this difference like the dividends minus the five-year average and the dividends minus the last year's free cash flow is a difference of one uh, almost one billion dollars that's insane that's not that good honestly and i'll give you my reasons why in just one second but anyways these payout ratios are 11.41 percent for the last year's free cash flow and 23.39 percent for the five-year average it's still pretty healthy in my personal opinion anything under 60 60 is like my threshold so anything under 60 for me is like really really good the fact that this is still sub 30 in both and one of them is even sub 15 so it is even better it's still telling me that they could afford this dividend. All right, now let's come into the fundamentals. Starting, of course, with the net income, five years ago of $618.2 million, to one year ago of $1.6 billion, increase of 157%. Now, the problem I have with this net income, and I'll tell you guys right now, I'm going to have a problem with this in pretty much all of these profit metrics, like straight up. There's a massive jump from three to two years ago. Three years ago, guys, was COVID. And take a look at this, from five to four to three, roughly around like the $600 million mark, right? And then from three years ago to two years ago, after COVID, $1.4 billion. Now we all know, right? We all know that after COVID, especially logistics were in high demand. I mean, we all heard the stories of like the shipping containers in like California and China that they weren't being moved. It was just a logistics issue all over the place. So that could explain it. But unfortunately, even though they were able to replicate this the following year, I still do not believe that these circumstances that we're in right now 
will persist into the future. More specifically, like even four years into the future, I do not foresee this unless we go into some really bad stuff, right? But the fact that they jumped from three to two years ago from 696 million to 1.4 billion, and then one year ago they did 1.6 billion, guys, I don't think that that's pretty sustainable. So I'm going to go with like a 45% on this one. And in fact, looking at the free cash flow, this is even more pronounced. Five years ago, $525.3 million. Two one year ago, of $1.87 billion. Billion with a B. So take a look at that. That's a massive, massive jump of 256% with an average of $911.58 million. Take a look at this. More pronounced than that of the income. Five to two years ago, they were in the millions of dollars. One year ago is when they jumped up massively from $832.3 million two years ago, which again, remember, two years ago for the net income, they did $1.4 billion. So $832.3 million two years ago to $1.87 billion. They more than doubled this cash flow in just one year absolutely insane and you want to know something else take a look at this looking at the cash from operations and capital expenditures take a look at this guys based on the cash from operations and capital expenditures this is crazy you got 572 771 655 868 1.9 billion dollars technically 1.95 billion dollars that's insane one year ago look at this every single year from five to two years ago it was like okay five seven six eight one point nine what? That's insane. And even their capital expenditures, they were, you know, they did increase their capital expenditures last year. However, it was it was not a lot. They jumped these cash from operations by a massive amount. And in my personal opinion, that's not sustainable at all. So I'm going to have to give this an even lower grade than that of the net income. I get that it's increasing, but I'm looking at sustainability. Is this able to be done into the future more and more and more? Like, are they able to replicate this? And in my personal opinion, that's a massive outlier. So I'm going to give this guys like, well, I gave the net income a 45%. I'm going to give this one a 40% because I do not like that outlier at all. Now, when it comes into the revenue, this one is looking a little bit better. But again, we still see massive outliers. Five years ago of $8.14 billion to one year ago of $19 billion, increase of 133.78%. Look at this. They did went down from five to four years ago by around like a couple million actually it was around like 200 million dollars and then from four to three years ago they went up and then they jumped once again right after covid they jumped from 9.58 billion 16.5 billion dollars that's insane now again this is similar to that of the income where they were able to replicate it one year later don't get me wrong I understand that that that's great but we're still in the same economic environment of high inflation of you know supply shortages are still happening they're less but they're still happening demand is still pretty high and i do not foresee this to continue so i'm going to have to give this the exact same thing as the net income and that's going to be a 45 percent now when it comes to the total assets minus the total liabilities this one is looking fairly decent as of today they're up to 3.5 billion dollars in this difference and they've never been negative in the past five years however once again we see a nice steady increase from five to four to three years ago but a massive jump from three to two years ago going from 2.66 billion to 3.5 billion nah, i wouldn't say massive but it's still a pretty big jump overall by nearly a billion dollars now they did go down from two to one year ago but it's not really that noticeable in my personal opinion average total assets is 5.88 billion dollars average liabilities is 2.82 billion dollars and doing this difference we get almost 3.1 billion dollars i'm going to give this actually a pretty good grade because i mean the, the difference here really isn't a lot and they have been up in the past five years so i'm gonna give this the bare minimum well no i'm gonna, I'm gonna give this like a 75 percent there we go. And now into the cash flow minus the liabilities. This one it is interesting because, well, what we're looking for here, guys, is are they at least bringing this closer and closer to zero? Now, they have had instances where they went up like they went closer to zero. For example, five to four years ago, $801.5 million to $770 million. And then from two years ago of negative $3.3 billion to negative $1.25 billion. So as it currently stands, they're doing okay, I guess you could say. Their lowest point was two years ago at negative $3.28 billion. Now, what's interesting here is, is that, well, their free cash flow wasn't that good. It was only $832 million, which is in line with the rest of it. So that means that even though two years ago it was in 
in line with the rest of it, guys. The fact of the matter is, is that they probably took on a lot of liabilities bringing this down. And the and the reason why one year ago they shot it right back up is because when it came to the free cash flow, the free cash flow shot right up to 1.8. Seven billion dollars. So that's probably the reason why that's happening. But overall, it's looking okay, right? They've only had like a few years where they went lower, so it's not too bad. But nonetheless, we got average cash flow minus average total liabilities, negative one point five five billion dollars. I'm going to give this. Um, I'm not. Well, I'm going to give this like an eighty-five percent. It's it's not that bad in my personal opinion. When it comes into the shares, outstanding. The silent killer when it comes to investing, guys. This one's actually looking well really good honestly it really really is five years ago 171.6 million shares two and year ago of 159.1 million shares that is a decrease of 7.3 percent and even from the previous year to the current year so again two years ago 167.2 million shares two one year ago of 159.1 million shares that's a decrease of nearly five percent that's insane and what i like even better and what i like even more about this is that within the past five years they've never ever not even one time issued shares Every single year has just been decreasing. Now, some years they decrease more than others, but the overall trend is to go down. So overall, I have to give this a beautiful 100%. Absolutely perfect. And lastly, cash and equivalents. They currently hold $2.15 billion with an average of $1.62 billion. Now, when it comes to the overall grades, we gave them the income of 45%, free cash flow 40%, revenue 45%, assets minus liabilities 75%, cash flow minus liabilities 85%, and the shares outstanding of 100% for an overall grade of 60. My biggest gripe for this, guys, and by the way, this grade could be a whole lot higher, except for the fact that I just don't like the spikes. I really, really don't. I get that, yay, they're doing better, you know, all of this good stuff. I do not like the spikes because they are uncertain spikes. If you were to see a nice, smooth curve, with little to no, to no spikes when it comes to the profit metrics, you could pretty much assume that they'll probably beat next year by the same margin as, as they have been beaten within the past five years. So it makes it a whole lot easier to come up with a correct value for the company. When you see a massive spike like we just saw right here when it came to the free cash flow, that's going to mess everything up especially when it comes to calculations for the intrinsic value of the cut of this company that's why i'm giving them these low grades of 45 40 and 45 for an overall grade of 59 percent but again you guys might have a different take on it and your grade might be higher or even lower so now with that said let's actually see if at the current share price of 110 dollars and 41 cents this is looking like a buy now obviously i just said that the data is skewing everything because of the massive spikes I'm actually going to do something unorthodox I've never done on a video before, but I'm going to do it after we input these numbers. Now, before inputting any numbers, take a look at this. Target share price not adjusting for debt is $205.19 across the board. And then adjusting for debt, guys, $424. Now, I get that the PE is telling me that it's cheap, or at least it's on the cheap end. I don't think it's that cheap of a difference of nearly $300 from the current share price to after debt. I think this is an issue of, again, the spikes messing everything up. But I'm going to do something in just one second after we impose this that's going to prove my point. So let's actually come over here to the growth tab. We can see that the forward is estimated at 7.75. So let's go fairly conservative when it comes to the revenue growth assumptions of 4, 5, and 6%. And when it comes to the shares buyback, let's pretty much put the same numbers because they have been buying back shares at around 7% within the past five years. So let's say roughly the same at 4%. 5%, 5% and 6%. Let's go 6% just because, you know, as things were to happen, right? I don't think they may buy back exactly seven. Maybe they'll buy back more. Maybe they'll buy back less. Being conservative is always the key. And I'm going with 6%. And with that, guys, we got the target share price of $246.07 to $269.09. And then adjusting for debt, this jumps up to $506.24 to $552.57 with a margin of safety of 5, 10, 50 percent. The lowest in this case would be $430.31 to almost $525. Now, you're probably looking at this and you're like, why are the numbers that high? Oh, dear Lord, the price tag is $110. What? And you want to know something? I fully agree with you. This is a case of once again, the spikes messing everything up. So let's do something unorthodox. Let's come over here into all the numbers that you have to input for the calculator in order for the calculator to come up with this intrinsic value. And I would like to actually change the cash operations one year ago value 
to something a little bit more reasonable, right? So you can see that, you know, they went up from 572 to 700, then they went down to 655, then they went up to 868. So what I want to do is I want to add about $200 million or so to this previous one over here, to this previous cash from operations. And this leads us to around $1.1 billion or so in cash from operations. Now, the free cash flow in this case would be $988.6 million, a whole lot better than what it was before of $1.87 billion. So with that, let's actually see how this affects the calculator and the intrinsic value. And with that, guys, now take a look at this. With the exact same revenue growths and protected share buyback and the required rate of return, the target share price now, not adjusting for debt, it is $120.54 to $131.82. And then adjusting for debt, it comes up to $255.18 to $278.02. Margin of safety of 5, 10, 50%. It is now the lowest at around 217 to 264. In my personal opinion, this makes a lot more sense than what it was before, right? I mean, with a PE of 11, you know, it's 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 cheap, but is it really that cheap where the target share price after debt was like $400 difference from the current share price? That to me is insane. So that's the problem when you have companies that aren't consistently growing their cash flow consistently, right? I know it's just redundant there, but that but it's true. When you have massive spikes like that, they really, really do affect what the intrinsic value of the company should be. So again, this is just an example. Obviously, these aren't the real numbers that you see. The real numbers that we got was like in the 500s, but my point is, is that you have to be careful when analyzing companies using this kind of free cash flow because if there are any massive outliers, I'm not saying if like a, there's like a little spike or like a little dip, you know, that usually gets averaged out. But that massive spike like that, that doesn't get averaged out, unfortunately. So in my personal opinion, this is more accurate, but these numbers come from ones that aren't real. So do with that information as you will. Now, there are other ways to analyze a company. You guys can have my book value calculator. This one uses book value and tangible book value to see the intrinsic value of the company. Revaluation calculator for companies that are real estate companies and dividend tracking sheet. I have this all available for free. Say this in every single video. It's in the description below. There's a video that's called all calculators video. You guys go there and that video teaches you like how to input all the numbers, where to find the calculators, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So please have these all for free. All I'm asking for in return, guys, is just help me grow my channel. I subscribe, comment. It really does help her with the algorithm on YouTube. We have reached more than 1,800 subs right now. That's insane. At 2,000, I plan to do something special. So if you guys would like me to do something special for the 2,000 subscriber mark, by the way, massive mark. Thank you all so much. I really do appreciate it. Then hit that subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your family, especially if they would like to invest using a fundamentals kind of method. And also, I have brought up my friend here on the, the channel, he's hopefully going to make a lot more videos more frequently. And he's mainly doing right now like things with options, but he will eventually get into technical analysis. So you guys are gonna have the fundamental analysis and the technical analysis aspect of companies hopefully in the future and in, in the very near future. And I know his microphone isn't that good, but I do plan on giving him a better one just so that way the video quality on his, on his end gets a little bit better. So if you guys are interested in that for future growth on the channel, course like subscribe comment it really does help thank you all so much i really do appreciate it but now let's actually take a look at this dividend a dollar 34 in annual dividends it's actually pretty good and by the looks of things this company is seeming fairly cheap in comparison again you make that distinction for yourselves but we're putting in five thousand seven hundred and twenty five dollars guys this nets you an annual dividends of sixty nine dollars and forty eight cents quarterly of seventeen dollars and thirty seven cents and a monthly of five dollars and seventy nine cents my personal opinion for 5725 I would like a little bit higher than this. And on top of that, again, I did not give a high grade for this. I do not like, like the spike. So this to me, it's like, yeah, I wouldn't even invest for its dividend either. It's just way too uncertain for me. All in all, thank you so much for the recommendation, Jesby. Uh, my final thoughts on the company is just that, you know, I'm not saying that they won't be able to persist in the growth i guess you could say in like the net income for all i know in the next upcoming years they could continue to go into the billions of dollars right but the uncertainty is there and that bothers me because it was only one or two years and for all you know things could come crashing down very very quickly so that to me is a major major problem 
and I don't like that kind of risk. That's why I gave it a 59%. But again, have these calculators, guys. You can also have the grades as well, like the weighted grades, because at the end of the day, this is not financial advice, and every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. That pretty much does it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube. That's going to follow me on my new tech sites. A link in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and I will see you all in the next stock analysis of video.